Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicle Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Hey. Eh? Yes. Look at you. So new information surrounding this Wendy Williams saga comes out daily, but no real updates have been released about her actual condition. No pictures, no voice recordings to her fans, nothing. We just have to take the word of Sabrina Morrissey, who happens to be her temporary guardian. And you know how we all feel about her when it comes to her taking care of Wendy. I don't know her either. Now, Wendy Williams, who is said to have had over eight figures before the conservatorship started, more than likely has an account that is dwindling as the days go by. It's being said that there are currently five attorneys who Wendy did not select, and they are all being paid out of her account, according to sources. Now, I have checked online, and it seems as though Wendy still has this unpaid federal tax debt, owing over $500,000, allowing the IRS to place a lien over her $4.5 million condo in Manhattan. And it's also being said that Wendy son's condo was not being paid for out of Wendy's money, causing him to almost be evicted. Now with all of that being said, more information is coming out as to the possible reason why Sabrina Morrissey did not want the documentary released. And let's just say it doesn't seem like it had anything to do with Wendy Williams and her possible embarrassment, but more so in an attempt to save face for Sabrina. We are going to get into this story and so much more, but before we do, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any news regarding this story and so much more. Now let's get back into it. I personally want now more than ever for the story of Wendy Williams to have this miraculous turnaround for the better, but it seems as though the powers that be are in it for the money and not for the betterment of the queen of daytime TV, Wendy Williams. Now it's hard to fathom this woman with such a strong presence who commanded any room she was in pretty much be committed, forced not to see her family, and most importantly, her son, whom she loved dearly. However, it seems like that's the life for Wendy Williams, and it doesn't seem like it's anything you, I, or anyone else can do about it. Now, Wendy Williams, who lost access to her Wells Fargo account in early 2022, because it was stated that she was an incapacitated person and a victim of undue influence and financial exploitation, seemed like the very same thing they were trying to keep her from is happening to her anyway. Now, according to sources, there are now five attorneys who Wendy did not select, who Wendy has absolutely nothing to do with, that are currently being paid out of Wendy Williams' finances. Now, with it being alleged that there were more attorneys that were being placed on Wendy Williams' team, the actual team that handled her day-to-day -day activities, that would be Sean Zanotti, her publicist, and also Will Selby, her manager, have all been let go. Now, it's being estimated that Wendy had over $50 million in her bank account, but honestly, since the family has been locked out and people that don't love Wendy have been put into place, there's no telling what her finances look like now, especially since there's no money being brought in. Now, the last time we knew of Wendy making any money was from the documentary, and we have the 19-page contract that honestly should have never been signed, not only given Wendy's condition, but three months after Wendy signed it, Sabrina became her temporary guardian. Now, Sabrina, who was also an attorney, should have nullified any agreement Wendy had with anyone. Especially considering she was this incapacitated person who could not even have her family around to handle her finances or day-to-day -day functions. However, anyone who was a stranger could get her to sign a contract and they were paid very handsomely as her manager to do so. Now again, this contract is 19 pages and we're not going to go through all of it. However, I do want to touch on several pieces that I do not like that were entered into this contract. Okay, this part in section two says the following, film, videotape, and recordings of the consultations and procedures and other services in connection with the consultations and procedures shall constitute material for purposes of this addendum and the agreement. Additionally, artists hereby waives any physician, patient, or similar privilege in connection with the consultations and procedures as a result of artists' participation in the program, including without limitation pursuant to the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, in the event that the artist elects to proceed with the consultation and procedures, but then later declines to proceed with the consultations and procedures or any other activity in connection with the program, artist acknowledges and understands that such declining may be filmed, videotaped, and otherwise recorded and included within the program or any other exploitation of rights granted to 
producer under the agreement. Now, we all saw Wendy's rapid decline in the documentary with the drinking and everything that was going on health-wise. Now, fortunately, we did not see any doctor's appointments, but what this clause was pretty much saying is if Wendy ever decided to go to the doctor's office, there was nothing that we could not see as the people. If they decided to record it, she had to agree with it. If at any point she decided to no longer have it recorded, she didn't have anything to say about that. They were still going to record it, and if they decided to play it for the viewing public, we were going to see it. Reading these 19 pages, I didn't get from it that this documentary was going to be something that was going to uplift Wendy. This was all about the bottom line, making that money, getting Wendy back out there in any way, shape, or form. Now, according to this contract, Wendy was supposed to receive an episodic fee of $100,000 and then a $1,000 daily glam fee that was for hair, makeup, everything else. So this Where Is Wendy Williams documentary was a four-part docu-series, meaning Wendy Williams would have made at least four Four hundred thousand dollars from it now that leaves us to question did the money go to the wells fargo account that wendy has no access to did it go directly to wendy or did it go to sabrina the world may never know. Now what the world does know or is just now finding out is that A&E, who happens to be the parent company for Lifetime, who Sabrina sued and tried to legally force to remove the documentary just days before it's airing, is now airing out Sabrina, saying that she knew about the documentary and its contract and she was okay with it. That was up until she saw the trailer. And although Sabrina was not in the documentary, according to A&E, there were things said about Sabrina or about Wendy's guardian in the documentary and Sabrina didn't like it. So Sabrina Sabrina wanted to remove the documentary to save face, not to help Wendy. And that's what A&E is coming out with. So A&E entered the chat by saying the following. Over the course of nearly two years, cameras chronicled the former television host and radio star Blank following the end of her iconic talk show. The documentary captures a raw, honest, and unfiltered reality of Miss Blank's life after she was placed under guardianship and sheds light on the vulnerabilities that had turned Miss Blank into a hot topic herself. Exhibit 10, affirmation of Connie Yalop. At a time when guardianship proceedings are being debated in our own state legislature and through headlines across the nation, the order impermissibly gags defendant from publishing speech that is unquestionably a matter of public concern, namely Ms. Blank's own journey through the guardianship process. The order does this at the behest of Ms. Blank's court-appointed guardian, plaintiff Sabrina Morrissey, who has known of the documentary at least a year. Yet only after seeing the documentary's trailer and realizing her role in Ms. Blank's life may be criticized did Ms. Morrissey enlist the courts to unconstitutionally Constitutionally silence the criticism. What's more, Ms. Morrissey's underlying claim for rescission of Ms. Blank's agreement with E1, the talent agreement, provides no basis to enjoin the documentary since the law does not require an individual's permission to depict them in a work of artistic expression. The unconstitutional prior restraint ordered by the Supreme Court should immediately be vacated or at a minimum in its enforcement should be pending an appeal. They go on to say that not only did Sabrina know about the documentary on February 9, 2023, they asked her to sit in and be a part of the interviews, which she declined. According to A&E, Sabrina knew about everything and never attempted to stop them from filming Wendy. However, when she saw that trailer, she was like, no, let's go ahead and end it. And on the eve of the trailer coming out, she decided to file a lawsuit. But unfortunately, she lost that battle. Then Sabrina took the route that she took in Wendy Williams' case when she actually wanted to seal everything so we could no longer see what was happening in court. However, A&E was not with it. A&E was like, look, we want these files unsealed. We want you to know what actually happened in this courtroom. Sabrina was going around saying, I don't like the way it's making Wendy look. It's going to hurt her earning capabilities in the future. But no, Sabrina, now that everything has been unsealed, we know the whole reason of you trying to cover everything up. I hope the family or Luke Hev or somebody is able to get Wendy back. What I need to do is hear from you. What do you think about everything going on in the world of Wendy? What do you think about these five new attorneys? getting all of her money what do you think about sabrina trying to seal these documents and saying oh it's wendy we don't want wendy to look bad but it was really her leave a comment and you know how we do we'll talk about it down below talk to you guys later Bye. as always thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that like button and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new episodes